a message from President Joe Biden that Indians should not have to wait for the US visa. Americans who privately own battle tanks, which actually fire. There are Americans who own anti-aircraft weapons. Now, this is a country, you know, America, talking about sovereignty, talking about rights, talking about uh, red lines. This is a country that has invaded dozens of countries, as I mentioned. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. The US is again playing a double game and today I have two parallel stories pertaining to the United States of America. Both these are policy stories and extremely interesting. On one hand, uh, the US offers a hand of friendship and says that we must do everything we can and this is regarding visas, so we must do everything we can to build bridges with India to to uh, offer a hand in friendship and to sort of make that bond of trust stronger. On the other hand, it passes a comment which says that there are certain red lines. And one of the red lines is, uh, you know, trying to kill a US citizen on US soil. You know, they were alluding to Gurpatwan Singh Pannu. Now, I have my research paper here and I'm going to point out the dichotomy in what US speaks and US thinks and US says. There is a great deal of difference and why US is trying this with India. You see, now, first of all, how they offer a hand of friendship. Eric Garcetti, the US ambassador to India, he said that President Joe Biden has instructed him to hurry up with the visas. So he's saying Joe, Joe Biden has instructed him to reduce the wait time for American visas in India, marking the first time a US president has given such an instruction to an ambassador in any country. So this is to make the Indians feel special that, you know, I have come here. Eric Garcetti, the US ambassador to India, says, I have come to India with a message from President Joe Biden that Indians should not have to wait for a US visa. Hurry up. Make it happen. So, and this has never happened where the President of America or the United States of America has given a directive to any ambassador, US ambassador, to do this for a country. This has never happened and this is happening for the first time. So this is supposed to make us feel extremely happy. Now, this is supposed to make Indians celebrate that, hey, we are all going to the US, etc. Now, currently the wait time for US visa is 250 days. Gassetti emphasized the need for the US Congress to address issues related to legal immigrants, green cards and citizenship and... Uh, the U.S. Embassy in India reported a 75% dis decrease in visa waiting time with 60% increase in granting of visas over the year, etc., etc. Now, uh, you know, the wait time of 250 days is still considered too long and there's a whole, whole thing here. You know, that uh, reported an influx of Indian students to the U.S. for higher, higher education with 35% increase reaching an all-time high of 268,923 students in 22-23 academic year as per the Open Doors report. And to strengthen diplomatic ties, two consulates have been opened in Bangalore and Ahmedabad with efforts underway to increase staff levels for effective representation, blah, blah. So this is supposed to make India feel good. So the gist is that uh, Joe Biden called Eric Garcetti, uh, the US ambassador to India and said, hey, uh, there is too much of a waiting time and India is waiting for US visas, should not happen. This is the first time the US president has called the US ambassador and given him such instructions, blah, blah. On the other hand, and this on the other hand is far more important than what you as a see. For me, I have relatives in the US. Okay, I have close relatives in the US and I've never been to the US. I've never applied for visa because I dislike traveling. All right, I, I don't like to travel. So there are many people who love traveling. You say that, hey, you know, you, you want to go to France and let's go to Greece. And they say, yay, let's catch a flight and go and we love traveling. I don't love traveling. I hate traveling. I dislike traveling. I do it under duress. I do it if, if in a professional capacity I'm required to go. You know, then only I will travel. Otherwise, I do not like traveling at all. Whether it's the US or UK or any other country. I, I don't like traveling within my country also. The, the only place where I look forward to going is Kashmir. Apart from Kashmir, I don't like to go anywhere. So, it's not that every Indian is dying to go to the US. You know, like the, U the Americans are saying. So, it's not like that. There are many like me who may not want to go, who have no plan of going anywhere. And then he says, unacceptable red line. Now, this is regarding Khalistani terrorist Gurpatan Singh Pannu. 
the U.S. ambassador to India, Eric Garcetti, emphasized that no government or government employee can be involved in the alleged assassination of another country's citizen, calling it an unacceptable red line and matter of sovereignty and rights. Now, let me read out and then I will say why America has messed it up again. I quote, any country having an active member of the government involved in a second country trying to assassinate one of their citizens, that's, I think, usually a red line for any country. That's the basic of issue of sovereignty. That's a basic issue of rights. So he told ANI in an interview, for any of us, just abstractly, that has to be a red line. No government or government employee can be involved in the alleged assassination of any one of your own citizens. That's just an unacceptable red line. So he's talking about... Uh, you know, Gurpatan Singh Pannu, and then he acknowledges the joint investigation between India and US regarding the alleged foiled assassination plot against Khalistani separatist uh, Gurpatan Singh Pannu, and he stated that America protects free speech, but individuals must adhere to the country's laws, and any criminal accusation must meet the threshold of a successful outcome in accordance with US law. When people do step over the line saying that some something will be bombed as opposed to saying somebody shouldn't fly, the US the United States freedom of speech, we want to, we want success for anybody if there is a criminal acquisition to reach the threshold that would have a successful outcome. So, essentially, now let me explain to you. I have read out all the boring stuff. Now, let's come to the exciting stuff. Let's come to the analysis of this. So, on one stage or at, at one level, America says that, you know, we want more and more Indians to come to the United States and we are fast-tracking visas and this comes directly from POTUS, the President of the United States. And at the other hand, what Eric Garcetti says, that this is clearly a red line and if Indians try to assassinate a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil, it's a matter of sovereignty, etc. First of all, why does U.S. talk about sovereignty at all? I don't understand. They have invaded dozens of countries. When it happens to them, and I'm not saying India has done it, not for a moment am I saying that India has done it, or India has attempted to assassinate Gurpatwan Singh Pannu. Pannu is a joke, we all make fun of him. I don't think India wants to assassinate Pannu, right? Pannu is insignificant, all he does is make threats in a Punjabi-English-Hindi hybrid. It's very funny, I think Pannu is a whole lot of fun. I've got, I've got a small teddy bear right up there. I'm pointing towards that teddy bear. I've got the teddy bear and it's, it's got Pannu written on it. I mean, Pannu is no threat to anybody and nobody would want to assassinate Pannu. I think this is, I think they've got it backwards. But just to say that, no, this is a country, you know, America talking about sovereignty, talking about rights, talking about uh, red lines. This is a country that has invaded dozens of countries, as I mentioned before. They invaded Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Korea, Vietnam, they send their marines to so many countries in South America. I, I don't know. The, the, the complete list of the crimes of the United States of America is so long. It's so long. They, they just feel that they can do anything. But when it comes to them, they're very, very sensitive. Americans are very sensitive. The Americans can burn your house to the ground. And that is absolutely acceptable. But should you protest or should you take action, then you become a villain. And this is clearly the case in this uh, in this matter also. You know, trying to blame. So this is what America is doing. You know, on one hand they say, you know, we like India and we want to give priority to India. On the other hand, they got this Gurpatwan Singh Pannu issue in between, which is hardly an issue. If India wanted Pannu dead, Pannu would be dead. Is is it so difficult to get somebody killed in the United States of America? What nonsense are they saying here? America is full of drug addicts. It's full of weapons. It's full of people on, on all sorts of drugs. It's full of homeless people. It's full of violent crimes. Haven't you heard? Every single week there is a, uh, there is a mass shooting in America every 15 days. I mean, at least twice or thrice a month. You hear of a mass shooting in America. Somebody enters a shopping mall with an AR and shoots five people, ten people, three people. It's extremely common. Schools are not safe. Libraries are not safe. University campuses are not safe. Everybody has access to a gun. In America, in some of the states, because every every state has a different gun law, but in some of the some of the states in the United States of America, especially in the southern states, you can order a fully automatic machine gun on the internet. All you need is a credit card. Just order. They'll deliver an AK-47 to your residence here. Yeah. It'll come nicely packed with a thousand rounds of ammunition and three spare magazines. Yeah. You can you can order military grade weapons. You go on the internet. Please go on the internet. There are 
Americans who privately own battle tanks, which actually fire. There are Americans who own anti-aircraft weapons. Now, these are very dangerous, these are very dangerous, uh, you know, these are uh, military-grade weapons. And they can cause serious destruction, but Americans own them. They proudly take them during the weekend to the ranches and they fire them. This is the United States of America. If we actually wanted to kill Pannu, all, it, all you need to do is give $500 to a homeless man. It's not like Pannu has an entire squad of bodyguards, yeah? It's not that whenever Pannu leaves his house, he's surrounded by 50 people armed with submachine guns. Yeah? It's not like that. We don't want to kill Pannu. Nobody wants to kill Pannu. This is an American invention. This whole killing of Pannu that India wants to kill Pannu. And somebody from RNAW planned to kill Pannu. If RNAW wanted Pannu dead, Pannu would have been dead long back. It's very easy. Give a hundred bucks to a, to a homeless man in America, a homeless drug addict and say that you'll get a hundred more. He'll wait and when Pannu comes, he'll, he'll attack him. But we never want to do, we have never wanted to do that. We have never done it in the past. So I don't know what game America is playing, but clearly this, both these news items, you know, uh, trying to reach out to India saying that you're a great friend and then saying that these are our red lines. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, diplomacy, the two-faced diplomacy that the United States of America does. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the question and answers. The first question is from Sakti Kesavan. Hey, sir, hope you and family are doing well. Hello, Sakti, hope you and your family are doing well. There are radical Islamist elements in India. Is there a chance of there being a deadly school shooting in India? After all, they've already threatened France. Even the US experienced a massacre in Sandy Hook, so we aren't immune to such acts. Of course, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Yeah. They did 26-11, radical Islamists. They did 26-11. They attacked a bus station, they attacked a hotel, they attacked a restaurant, they attacked uh, public places. So why not a school? They will do it and they'll do it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, like this, they'll do it. All you need to tell radical Islamists is that these, these school kids, you know, all, mm, all of them are kafir. Some lunatic wants to go to heaven, he'll do it. Yeah. Dr. Sandhya. Hello, sir. This is Dr. Sandhya. Me and my family are avid watchers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Very kind of you. I have a question about CA amendments, sir. I agree with the government to welcome the minority of the neighboring countries, but I have these doubts. These people coming to a country indirectly welcoming the radical individuals or many radical elements can enter our country in guise of these minorities. Should we take on such perennial threat or will this not be taxing to our country and our police and intelligence agencies to constantly be counterproductive against such threats? I might sound paranoid and useless, but what do you do as someone who has lost someone in these senseless attacks? My paranoia, my being paranoid is justified. What is your opinion? Uh, Dr. Sandhya, I would uh, disagree with you, ma'am, and I would disagree because most of the people who are coming inside are Hindus and uh, Sikhs, and there are Christians, and there are Jains, and there are Buddhists. These people have been discriminated against, and I just want to say one thing. There is always a danger, whatever you do. You go outside, you cross the road in your own city, in your own neighborhood, there is a danger of being run over by a bus. There is danger in everything. You go to the market, there is a danger that somebody will snatch your phone. Somebody will pick your pocket. Wherever you go, there is danger. So if anybody thinks that there is no danger absolutely in CA, there could be. There, there is always danger in everything that you do. You call your own relatives home, there is a danger. Maybe that guy end up fighting with you. There is always danger about everything. But most of these people are, in fact all of them, they are victims of a very repressive, radical Islamist regime which does not even consider them human. That is the problem. And this is their country, this is their land and uh, they have every right to come here. CA is just a legal instrument. It's just a legal instrument. Otherwise, morally and ethically, these people who are living in Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan, the minority, especially the Hindus and Sikhs and, you know, others, Christians or Parsis or Buddhists or Jains, all these. They have every right to be here. They have every, every right to be here in India. It's just that we have facilitated that by CAA. So that is a legal process, but ethically, morally, they have as much right to India as I have or you have. There is no doubt in my mind about that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed our episode. And if you did, please press the like button.
सब्सक्राइब टू चैनल डोंट फॉरगेट प्रेस द बेल आइकन जय हिंद वंदे मातरम भारत माता की जय